Now, welcome, my friends, to a new episode of Frameworks. And this time, we're not going to talk about um, an overall framework for one lesson, but we're going to talk about um, a minor framework for presenting language. And um, this framework is called the CECDW. Now, why do I call it the CECDW? This is not a scientific name for a framework. It's, it's actually an acronym, okay? Uh, so we just have the first letter taken from every step. And this is what makes that name, the C E C D W. So, so let's look at the first C, right? And the first C stands for contextualization. And actually, what we mean by this is that you cannot teach grammar or vocabulary without a context. What is a context? That's a good question. A context can be um, realia. A context can be um, a story, a short story. A context can be a situation. Um, a context can be a picture. Uh, all these can represent a good context for teaching vocabulary or grammar. So rule number one, you cannot teach vocabulary or grammar without a context. So l l let's agree on this one. Now, um, number two, step number two, because we say C, E, C, D, W. So the E is for what we call elicitation. And elicitation is using the context in order to let students guess what the word, okay, you want to teach is. Now, and, and if you're teaching grammar, you're trying to elicit the structure from students. Now, this elicitation stage shouldn't take much time, like maximum 30 seconds. And don't try to exceed 30 seconds because that, that, that will become really boring. If students don't know, then they don't know. Don't try to keep eliciting and eliciting and eliciting. No, don't do that, right? So you just elicit for 30 seconds and if one student gave it to you, now you move to the following step. So contextualization first, and then after that, elicitation. Now after elicitation, concept checking questions. Now when it comes to concept checking questions, these are the questions we use in order to make sure that students understand the meaning of the elicited word. And we actually use concept checking questions when we're teaching something that, um, that is not clear and something that is not obvious. For example, if you want to teach the word glasses, okay, you can show a pair of glasses to your students. So that would be your context. And then in order to use elicitation, you would say, hmm, what are these? And then students would say, or one student would say, glasses. Now, if this happens, you don't ask concept checking questions. Why? It's because your students might be at a lower level, but they're not aliens. They're still human beings. <laughs> they understand what glasses are when they see ones. Right? So, in this scenario, I wouldn't um, ask CCQs. But what if you're teaching this? And we know that this is an iPod. But, um, you know, for example, here in Egypt, an iPod is, is not that popular. So, not many Egyptians know what an iPod is. So, it, it's not enough to show them an iPod. Okay, or show them, a, uh, show them a picture like this one and say, what do you see in the picture? Even if one of the students said it's, it's an iPod, uh, that doesn't mean that everyone else understands. So you still need to ask concept checking questions. So you will say, hmm, and what do we use an iPod for? Uh, 
So so I say, um, calling people, I said, no, no. It's for listening to music. Do we call people using an iPod? And the answer is no, we don't. So it goes this way. Then once you're done with concept checking questions, you move from there to C, E, C, D, drilling. And drilling is for the sake of teaching pronunciation. And what I usually do with my students is that I use, um, I say the word three times, and then I use choral drilling, then group drilling, then individual drilling, as you will see uh, in the coming demo. And then after that, um, we go to the last part, which is writing, the W part. And in the writing part, what we do, we clarify the spelling. We show students the stress and we also show them the word class. Now, my friends, um, let's go and watch um, a demo where I teach uh, some vocabulary using the CECDW framework. Let's go. What do you see in a picture? Bag. Bag. There is another word. Yes, it's a bag. There is another word that starts with a B. Suitcase. With a B. With a B. It starts with a B. What is it? Actually, this is a briefcase. Yeah. Okay. So now, do we use it for holidays or for business? Business. Yeah, right. It's used for business. And do we put clothes in it? No. So what do we put in a briefcase? Yeah, right. Okay, so listen carefully. Briefcase. 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 This group? Briefcase. Briefcase. Yes. Briefcase. 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 Brief
What do you see in the picture? Fisherman. Oh yeah. A fisherman and holding? But well, the fish is enormous. There is another word starting huge. with an H. Huge. huge. Very good. So when I say huge, do I mean small or big? Very big. Big or very big? Very, very big. big. Very good. So listen carefully. Huge. 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 The screw? Huge. huge. Here? Huge. Over there? Huge. Yes. Huge. 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 Very good. And what kind of word is it? Adjective. And of course, we're not going to talk about a stress response. One word. Very good. Yeah, it's close. All kind of clothes. What was that? Ah, yes. Excellent answer. Yeah, that's a cardigan. Now, what is a cardigan made of? Wool. Yeah, usually wool. It can be made of cotton, but yeah, usually wool. Does it have buttons in the front? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so do we wear it over clothes or under clothes? Over, over clothes. Yes, excellent. So listen carefully. Cardigan. 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 This group? Cardigan. Here? Cardigan. Oh, there. Cardigan. 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 Very good. And what kind of word is it, we say? No. Nice. Yeah. And where do you think the stress is? Yeah, here. It's on this part. If it were here, you would have said cardigan, cardigan yeah. but you don't say that. You say cardigan. So the stress is here. Lovely. Who do you see in the picture? What's her job, the lady? No, nurse. Doctor. No. It's another job starting with an M. Yeah. <laughs> now let me tell you, she's a midwife. She's a midwife. So, where do we see a midwife? Yes, we see it in a hospital. When do you see a midwife? Birth. Yeah. When a lady is given birth to a child. What does a midwife do? Take care of the baby. Again? Take care of the baby. Of the baby and taking care of? The mother. The mother and helping? The doctor. And, and the doctor as well. Right? Okay, wonderful. So listen carefully. Midwife. 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 This group? Midwife. Here? Midwife. Here? Midwife. Midwife. Okay. Now use? Midwife. 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 And where does the stress go? Do we say midwife? Or say midwife? Midwife. So it's is usually in compound nouns. The stress goes on the first part. Okay? Right. What is this? Chair. Um, mm. chair. Yeah, what kind of chair? Armchair. Um, chair. Chair. Wonderful. Wonderful. So listen carefully. Armchair. 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 What kind of word is it? No. no. Where is the stress? Armchair. It's on arm, so I say armchair. Right? Lovely, lovely. What is this? Marker. 
Okay? Marker. Yeah, lovely. So listen carefully. Marker. 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 This group? Marker. Here? Marker. Over there? Marker. Mark. Marker. 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 What kind of word is it? No. No. <coughs> Where's the stress? Yeah, first one here. Because if it were here, it would be marker. Oh, yeah. right, we don't say that, right? It's marker. Good, good, good. Lovely. Thank you very much, my friends, for watching this episode of Frameworks. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to uh, British E channel. Thank you so much. Bye bye.